Hello my fellow freedom builders and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to touch on a very, very important topic. I have made videos about it before, but now we are putting it into a series and we are making a structure over it and we're going to talk about automatic investing. And I know that it can sound a bit boring because we want to be in the game and we want to take our own decisions. But as I'm going to show you today, most investors over time actually end up underperforming the markets. So what we're going to do here today is uh, I'm going to start a series where we're talking about automatic, automatic investing. And I am going to show you how I'm going to test it because I have a number of automated, very passive strategies that I'm going to test over time. And over time is not just the next couple of weeks or next couple of months, but pretty much as long as this channel uh, will be here on the internet and on YouTube, I will be testing this and I'm, I'm going to show you a live result of my tests. I'm going to show you later in the video what I'm going to test, so um, stick to the end. I'm going to show you some exciting stuff there. First of all, uh, I put a computer in here and I'm getting uh, to that later, but of course that is because many are calling this automatic investing for robo-investing or they have some algorithm or investment robots and I'm going to show you a bit about what that is all about. The big question of course is what is best? Is it humans or is it machines when it comes to investments? And uh, in most cases, I'm sad to say, but the machines win. And as I'm going to show you in a second, it is because that us humans, we are kind of damaged, if you can call it that. We have something called emotions and uh, they affect the way we invest. I think you, if you have been invested here in 2020, you know the feeling uh, of uh, being run over by a freight train of a market and then getting out too late and getting in too late. And I'm also going to show you what that is all about. Now, automatic investing is, of course, not a robot. But what is it? Well, pretty much it's just a fixed set of rules. And you can put them into a computer and you can say to the computer, when this uh, instance occurs, you, uh, occurs, you have to trade. Uh, there are fixed rules, there are fixed entry, meaning that you cannot d debate or discuss uh, if you are going to enter a trade or not. Because if the rule says enter, then you enter. There's also a fixed exit, no matter if you think it will run up just a bit further or if it has been dropping and the system says sell, well, then you cannot really argue and say, well, I'm sure that it will come back. If it says sell, you sell. There's fixed risk management, so you're not taking too much risk on. And there are absolutely no emotions, none whatsoever. Now, this is actually the most important part. Um, I have been doing this with the rules for many years and that have been quite successful with it. But still, uh, as those of you that are subscribers for my uh, Danish subscription service, you know that sometimes I actually get triggered out of a trade or into a trade or too late into a trade because I have some sort of uh, emotions going on. The other day, I took a trade. I, I wrote it out to my members and saying, I just bought this stock. And in an instance, I had a couple of responses saying, I'm not touching that stock anymore because I have bad experience with it. And um, a bad experience is another word for I have some um, emotions attached to this stock. And you might have been losing five or 10% on it three times in a row. And then you're not taking the fourth trade because you have bad experience with it. And then it goes up 500%. So these emotions are not really our friends when we are investing. So my plan is actually to give you a set of tools over time here that you can invest from or at least get some inspiration from maybe to build your own set of rules. Now, let's just have a quick look at the stats, why these emotions are so terrible when we are investing. Now, um, I've seen different um, research papers on this and they have different numbers. Some of them are very large uh, differences and some of them are small, but this is a basic picture. And I, I, I guess uh, that you get the picture here. This is from realinvestmentadvice.com and they have uh, taken over 30 years of data where they have compa uh, compared the uh, normal private retail investor to uh, just investing in the S&P 500 or uh, an ETF or a mutual fund that covers the S&P 500. And what we can see here is 
that and I should say this started in I think it was 19 was it 84 I'm not sure but it was back it, it was way back and uh, it ended here in 2015 so we don't have any recent data, uh, data but I think this is uh, just sufficient enough to give us a good picture what we can see here is the green uh, here is the, the retail investor and uh, at this point over the last 12 months uh, the retail investor on average would have made something like minus two and a half percent and the S&P 500 would be a bit up and the red bar here is the difference meaning that when this is red it means that the retail private investor has underperformed the market with something like three and a half four percent. Now over a three, three year period here and that's from 2015 and three years back we can see that the retail investor would have made something around 9% but the S&P 500 had gone, have gone up by 15% yet again an underperformance over three years over five years the same picture retail investor S&P 500 a negative difference here over a 10 year period same picture 20 year period same picture and 30 year period same picture meaning no matter pretty much which time frame you're looking at the private retail investor is underperforming the market that is of course partially due to some trading costs but mainly as a research paper tells us it is because our our emotions and if you're saying that this is not much then you should maybe have your eyes or head examined because if you have seen some of my videos about compound interest and you can see that you're underperforming the market with several percentage points each and every year you also know that the your your fortune your your savings are quite different if you've got one of the uh, the annualized portfolio growth of 2.5 percent or the annualized of 5.9 percent which is the difference here in this case so here you can see that had you started with a hundred thousand dollars over 30 years investing them the, in, investing the money yourself and making all of the emotional mistakes you do, you would have gotten uh, ended up with two hundred and three thousand dollars and I am pretty sure that this is adjusted for inflation I think it it is uh, with the um, with the the S&P 500 you would have gotten five hundred and fifty eight thousand instead that's quite a different when you're about to retire and as you can see emotional decision making is costing investors almost sixty percent of their performance I've also seen numbers saying that it is only ten to twenty percent of their performance but I guess that's a bit uh, a question of how you are uh, constructing your, your research. But I haven't seen a single research paper saying that private investors are uh, on average outperforming the markets over 30 years. So what I'm teaching my uh, subscribers in, in my paid subscription service in, in Danish is some fixed rules that they, <clears throat> that they need to invest from because that really, really uh shoots up the 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 chance of us at least uh, doing as well as the market and maybe with a bit less risk and that's another thing uh this chart here is not looking at risk but uh, the research papers i have found shows actually that the retail investor ends up with more volatility in their portfolio than the overall market and i guess that you know the reason and you have seen this before this is an investor psychology cycle and you can see here we are entering optimism excitement and so on this is in a bull market and as you know the good old saying everybody is a genius in a bull market so pretty much everything we touch turns to gold and we have euphoria and we are telling everybody about it and the neighbors and the friends and the colleagues they're all getting into the market right about here you can see this emoji here the smiling wow i am smart we are convinced everybody that we are geniuses and we are suffering from what i call the jesus syndrome meaning that we are convinced that we can walk on water but then reality checks in and uh, the market starts to fall we feel a bit of an uh, anxiety and uh, a denial here but as you can see this emoji temporary setback i'm a long-term investor 
that's another mistake many people do. They they change their time frame. They start out as day traders, then the trade goes against them, and all of a sudden it's just a bit longer term swing trades, and then it keeps going against them, and they add to the loser, and then they say, well, I'll just keep it for the long run. Eventually it will come up, and maybe 15 years later they're in break even. But then we have fear, depression, panic, and capitulation down here. How could I have been so wrong? People are selling the stocks and thinking that the world will go under. We saw this this spring when the market collapsed. And then when all the retail traders have sold out, then we start to get in here. Depression, hope, relief, optimism. And then up around here, that's where retail uh, investors are getting in again. And meaning that we are getting tricked out of the market every single time. So what I'm going to test here is I'm, I'm going to I'm going to see if we can bypass these emotions and simply just go with a fixed set of rules. And um, I have several different uh, strategies that I'm going to test. Some of them I have been running for some years and uh, one of them is an ETF strategy. Um, some of you know it already. We're setting up a little uh, investment company with that uh, ETF based. And um, that is giving us somewhere around 13, 14, sometimes 15 percent on average per year. Uh, the reason for the difference is a bit uh, different uh, on when you start the, the testing, but around 13 to 15 percent a year with a sharp ratio well above one. If you don't know what a sharp ratio is, it is when you take your performance and divide uh, by the volatility of your portfolio. So we basically want good returns, but we also want it with less volatility. So um, I have my own ETF strategies and then I'm also using the Quant Investing. I'll put a link to that below here if you're interested in looking at their website. They have tested a number of strategies and I will go in depth with each and every one of them and I'll show you how I test it. But as you can see, they have back tested different criteria, and um, some of them are actually over quite an extended uh, period of time here. We have from uh, 2001 to 17 here. They tested this uh, QI value investment strategy that made 13.8% per year. And in the same time span, the S&P 500, the index made 1.9% per year. So you ended up after what, 16, 17 years, 16 years with 710% in return compared to 35% uh, if you had just been in the S&P 500. Uh, there are some O'Shaughnessy trending value investment strategy here. Now, this is one of the longest time periods uh, of, of test here from 63 to uh, 09. That is something like 46 years, making 21% per year compared to 11% in the market. They see uh, some uh, micro cap here from 81 to 16. And as you can see, pretty much all of them are beating the market. Now, I'm not saying that we can beat the market as much as this um, because many of these are tested in the United States. Some of them are tested in Europe um, and they were different times because, for instance, here, um, this one just mi missed the dot com crash. We did get the uh, 08 financial crisis, though, uh, and we are not having the 2020 uh, virus crisis uh, in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at all of these performance stats and then I am going to set up tests in different markets. It could be some in the US large cap, some in US mid and small cap, uh, some in European stocks, maybe even Scandinavian stocks where I live in Denmark. And then we're going to test them live and I'm going to show you the results month by month to see if this actually uh, is the right way to go. And this as we can see in the in these research papers are beating the markets. However, I would actually be satisfied if I could teach you a strategy that could just do the just as good as the market, but with less volatility. So as you all know, the S&P 500 had in 08, it, had, it was down something like 55 or 57 percent. So one of the things I'm looking for when I'm testing my own strategies are how did it do in 08? And if I can see that my strategy was only down 20%, the max in 08, then that's a good thing. So we want the good performance and we want less volatility. Because as you know, 
um, things happen in our life and maybe we are getting a divorce or we are moving to somewhere else or what do I know uh, the kids are going to, to need some money for an apartment and and often when we need the money is just when the market has tanked and we are selling our stocks at a 50% discount and not getting a good good enough value for our investments so what I what I want is the best potential strategies with the least drawdowns, the least risk, the least uh, volatility. So that is what you're going to get in this series. And my plan is to make at least one or two videos per month about this testing, where I'm going to show you all the parameters I'm testing for, and what the results are, and uh, we can evaluate them together. Uh, but as I said, there's a link below and um, I will keep you updated here. I'm also um, setting up an email list for my for, for the English YouTube channel here so that people can sign up. There's a little investment course for free in there that, that you get over some, some weeks. And then I will write uh, out with the result for you. But uh, in the in a week or so, I will have the, the email set up so that you can sign up for the email list. And then we can make sure that you're not missing any of these test videos. That's all for now. If you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, all of that down there. And I will look forward to talk to you again very, very soon. I have some very exciting videos coming up. Uh, in the upcoming days, one with some gold minings, one with some uh, Nikola competitor. I have some with some US swing candidates I think you should have a look at. So here up to the weekend, uh, I think we will have um, maybe two videos, one of the at least Friday or something like that, and maybe also in the weekend. So make sure that you have a look at the channel, hit the bell notification down there so you get notified when new stuff comes up on this channel. That's all for now. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.